Okay, let's talk about the uh, yeah. results of the Citizens' Assembly and their surprising vote to radically liberalise the abortion laws here. And let's be clear about what the constitutional position on abortion here is, and it's Article 40. 3.3 of the Constitution, and it says the state acknowledges the right to life of the unborn and, with due regard to the equal right to life of the mother, guarantees in its laws to respect and, as far as practicable, by its laws to defend and vindicate that right. And that was passed in, by a constitutional referendum in, I think, 1983. Mm. And that has proved to be very contentious over the last several years, and there are now proposals to change that. And the, the Citizens' Assembly was asked their views on this, and they were asked, do you think Article 43.3 should be retained in full or not retained in full? And just 12% said it should be retained, and 87% said it should not be retained in full. They were also asked, do you think Article 43.3 should be repealed or replaced or amended? And 44% uh, said it should not be repealed and 56% uh, said it should not be retained in full. And uh, they were also asked, should Article 43.3 be replaced with a provision that explicitly authorised the Oireachtas to legislate on the issue of abortion? And 57% said yes, and 38% said no. In other words, giving the Iraq just the right to decide what should apply in regard to abortion here, not the Constitution. Isn't that a good idea, Cora? Let the Iraq just decide. No, it's not Why? a good idea because um, what we're talking about here is the right to life of unborn children and that should be in the Constitution. It's a fundamental human right and the ideal place for that is the Constitution <laughs> because the Constitution protects human rights in Ireland. What my concerns are about the Citizens' Assembly and the way it was run, Vincent, is that it was chaotic, muddled and managed and the members were treated in that way and I'm not in any way surprised at the radical results that have um, come back. What we need to remember and what viewers need to think about is the fact that these people were not experts. They were not given uh, uh, expert okay. evidence. That's right, yeah. And they but were voting on things that they the had no information issue. about. Should, what, was, what would be so bad about giving our parliament the right to decide what regime should apply with regard to abortion, given that there's a lot of, uh, a, a lot of uh, disparate views about th this issue among the populations of the whole? Why not let the doll decide? The doll decide, decide? You see, that comes back to why the Eighth Amendment went into the Constitution in the first place and why a majority of the Irish people wanted it in there in 1983. It's because they looked around the world and they saw what was happening. They saw that the right to life of unborn children was being stripped away, like it happened in England in 1967. Okay. And what happens in England today, all, all right, one in five fine. pregnancies... But if the abortion. Irish people now want to change their minds about that, they're entitled to do so under the Constitution. And they'll be asked to do that in a constitutional referendum, which is probably going to take place early next year. And the question I'm asking you again is, what would be so, so bad about Parliament being, uh, being asked to decide what abortion regime we should have here? Because what you're saying there is, we put it into the hands of elected representatives, yes. or indeed anybody, to say... Not anybody, no, no, elected representatives. But, but anybody, anyone, does not have the right to say that another human being cannot live. That's com completely against uh, just genuine human rights protection. And That's the would you not trust the uh, elected members of our Dáil and Senate, uh, insofar as the Senate people are elected, would you not trust them to act appropriately in this instance? Well, what I would say again is just look around the world, see what's happened. Look at England, where 90% of babies diagnosed with Down syndrome in the womb are aborted. That's what happens once you undermine and once you remove protection uh, for unborn children. The other thing that happens is that you undermine um, the dignity and the protection of every person living in society because you can't, um, you can't protect some people and, pr and not protect others. Either we protect everyone or we don't protect okay. anyone. What's your question? Please? My question is, is it, isn't it a good idea just let Parliament decide? Absolutely. I mean, first of all, we live in a democratic society. I think one thing that this has thrown up, I suppose, is the importance of who you vote for and knowing what they stand for. Um, so that I suppose people know what they're getting. Um, I suppose I, I was elected and I, I, I made it very clear, my views. Um, I do wonder sometimes who has elected Cora to anything. 
I don't know who you represent. What does that matter? But in the sense that, that, to do with that no, but We're in the sense, a it doesn't matter whether she's elected by anybody or, or but, whether um, anybody would vote for her if she did go for election. But um, I'm I'm an elected member of Dáil Éireann, and we voted um, to establish the Citizens Assembly, and now the work is coming back to the committee. I am, I suppose, surprised at how we're dealing with the question of should the uh, constitution be changed to allow. The, our parliament to decide on what abortion yes. regulations yes. should apply here. Yes. And why do you think that's so? Why shouldn't there be, for something as crucial as the protection of life, why shouldn't that remain in the Constitution? Well, first of all, um, I mean, it's clear from the, from the recommendations of the Citizens' Assembly and from pretty much all polling data that there is a massive appetite out there to change <coughs> abortion laws in Ireland. I don't think anyone could argue that amongst the people of Ireland. Um, I suppose Cora mentioned there about the liberal um, abortion regime in, in the UK, and it's very easy to compare with the UK, but if you look at maybe the, the Dutch situation, where they rolled out a significant sex education program in secondary schools, they have a um, huge contraceptive program for teenagers, and they have extremely liberal um, regime for abortion, but they have the lowest rate of abortion in Europe. And one always, also has to remember that um, having no abortion in Ireland doesn't stop abortion. We just export the problem. And I think it's time for Ireland to wise up, for the members okay. of Dáil Éireann to wise up and to start okay. treating okay. women correctly so in this you, country. So you're in favour of a change that would simply allow the Iraqis to decide on all issues to do with abortion. You wouldn't, we uh, have a clear instance, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't, for instance, be in favour of replacing the present uh, Article 43.3, with a provision whereby abortion would be permissible in certain circumstances, but not otherwise. Well, I think what we have from the from the Citizens Assembly is we have seen a process, and you, you spoke there of, of some of the questions. There was sort of like a cascade effect with the questions. So it was like, okay, do you see this or this? What do you want? Where do you want to go from here? So it was a very, very... If anyone that looked in on the assembly or, or read the transcripts, okay. it's a very robust system to get to this point very, of recommendations. It would be really helpful if you just answered the question. I, the question I said was, so you're in favour of the Dáil and the Senate being empowered to take all the decisions with regard to abortion, rather than have... Yeah, I think we need, we need to frame the Rather than having uh, a, a change to Article 43 that, for instance, permitted abortion in certain limited circumstances. My, my personal view um, would be leaving all of what's come out in the last few days. My personal view should be, is that a, women's health should have no place whatsoever in the Constitution. However, it looks like we may be in a position now with the recommendations that we have to um, okay. amend what's already there. Okay, read. Well, I think you make a good point about should we have a, an insertion in, um, in to replace the Eighth Amendment that the, the Dáil should legislate for it because we already have an article called 15.2 in the Constitution which states that the Dáil should legislate for, you know, to, to, to govern the country. Um, and that should be sufficient for the Dáil to legislate on this issue. Our position... But is that, is that fair? Because, for instance, people voting in an election vote for candidates and for parties on a whole wide variety of things sure. and, and they vote for them because for instance there'd be a tax cut or there'd be a promise of public expenditure in a particular way or there'd be a problem, an issue to do with local affairs or whatever and maybe to do with abortion as well but it'd be the only one of a whole uh, assortment of issues that they'd be voting Absolutely on. and all of the issues you mentioned are issues that we legislate for or are meant to legislate for. So abortion should be one of those issues, women's health should be one of those issues okay. and the Eighth Amendment should be okay. taken out of the Constitution but the, but the and argument, we'll still be fighting for that on the Doyle Committee, we'll still the, want that But the decision. argument that this this is democratic, uh, doesn't seem to me to be ho to hold up, uh, particularly on an issue that so many people regard as crucial, namely the issue of abortion. That but there are lots of issues that are regarded as crucial. There is nothing in the Constitution that legislates for men's health, for example. There's nothing in the Constitution that says that men uh, are subject to some kind of a, a, an article if they want to have a vasectomy to stop procreating. But there is the, to control women's lives. No. And that's why the Eighth Amendment should be... There's nothing to stop women's That's why the Eighth Amendment should be removed. And look, I mean, I know that you're making all these points about what's fair and Cora makes a point about what's contentious and all the rest of it. 
But Zavita Halaparan would die because of the Eighth Amendment. That was, no. and, she died because of the Eighth okay. Amendment. That's not true. There have been women true. in this country okay. no, put through true. absolute disgraceful, degrading, and like inhumane that. treatment. But, uh, there was the case of put on life support machines. It is true that had abortion been available here, she almost certainly wouldn't have died. But that was not the only reason she died. She also died because of inappropriate treatment subsequent to the her her request for uh, an abortion. But had she been given the abortion, she probably wouldn't have needed the uh, inappropriate, or wouldn't have got the inappropriate right. treatment. That, uh, Not only would she be alive, she'd probably have children today. Oh. That's the mad thing about it, that she'd be alive and having a family. Vincent, this and is the, really those who say we're protecting you know, the unborn actually true. are actually, it's, it's um, very worrying those who say that the protection... Uh, let me finish my statement, Cora. Those, those who say no, let, let that they're protecting the unborn are actually... Uh, flying in the face uh, in this particular case of allowing women to go ahead and have children in the circumstances of their choosing where their health is protected. Okay. Cool. You know, I, I think it's really worrying that Breed still is talking about the tragic case of Savita Halapadamber, despite the fact that three independent reports have found that the lack of abortion in this country did not, um, did not cause her death. You know, there is... Manifest, uh, it's true, it, that it, had she got an abortion when she asked for it, she would be alive. Well, you know, that well, manifest well, all, all we can do is look at what the three independent reports but say. Isn't it obvious, say. though? Isn't it obvious? That she wouldn't have had the, the subsequent complications had she received, uh, had, she, uh, had the fetus been aborted at, that, uh, at the time that she had. Well, well, no, the problem was sepsis, which, was, which wasn't picked up and wasn't treated. That was the problem. It wasn't abortion. That was, it wasn't a lack of abortion in this country. And that's you're saying she would have died that even if she hadn't had an abortion, she would have died is, anyway. What I'm saying is that I'm going on the word of three independent reports carried out by, prepared by experts who looked into all of the medical evidence. In fairness to Breed, I don't think that she was there. And did that kind of work. But I want to say this. Um, I, was I, I, I don't think that you prepared those, those reports. Well, neither I did think, you, Cora. No, I didn't. But Unless I'm taking, you're creating your I, alternative taking, facts here. No, now. no, no. I'm going with the, the true facts, which are the independent reports. But let's get back to the Citizens' Assembly and the results, Vincent. Um, Kate has talked there about making decisions and giving legislators the right to make decisions. I just want to talk about what happened yesterday. And I would encourage viewers to watch the footage. I don't, Kate wasn't there yesterday. I didn't see her um, or on Saturday, but I have home never. Home children yes, well, I have never seen anything like what <clears> happened <throat> on taxpayers' money in Malahide yesterday and Saturday. There was utter on chaos. Keepers money. Utter yeah. chaos. Utter chaos. It was completely confusing. Let's take one example. Just one example. Um, <clears throat> the the citizens were asked to vote on things. They were given information minutes before the vote. Uh, one asked a question about time limits. They were told Which, that the time. Let, let me just make this. Okay. Point, but really you're talking about. Well, no, no, let's get away really, from the assembly. No, no, no. And, but, uh, hold on, this is very important about issues. what's going to happen next, okay? okay. Um, they asked a question about time limits, and they were then told that uh, the time limit of 22, right. min 22 minutes, right. 22 weeks was chosen because after that, uh, an injection of potassium okay. chloride would be have okay. to be put into a baby's heart. They then voted okay. a couple of minutes later okay. without reflecting on that. Mm. What I All want right. to ask Thanks. Kate, I have a question for Kate. It's impossible to have a I discussion with Decora because. No, 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 please. Please, there are, there are two people here who support repeal, and I'm the person okay. here. Please so. don't talk about the Citizens Assembly. I want to Let, ask Kate Whatever question. happened there is irrelevant to the issues we're discussing. No, Go no. on. I want to ask Kate a question. After considering the fact that these people were not experts, that that type of information was given to them minutes before they made a vote. You, so you want to talk think, about that? Does she think that that is a suitable basis for the Dáil to now go on and make a decision? Because the reality is that the Oireachtas Committee needs to what look at the What does it matter whether it is or it isn't? What assembly. does it matter? The issue is what decisions I, are going to be taken. Will there be a referendum? And the, the question I want to ask you is, why, what, what is so bad about asking the people again to, uh, to decide whether they want to retain Article 43.3 mm. in its present form or whether they want to change it. Because what That's you're so talking about, about is whether people will be allowed to live or die, whether children in the future will be allowed to live and okay. have a life or whether, okay. or whether they will have an injection have into their hearts. Are you seriously contesting the reality? Are you seriously suggesting that the people shouldn't have a right to determine what's in the Constitution? No, but what I'm saying is that we need to be realistic about what has happened, realistic about the fact that where we're at is a procedure, talking about a procedure that 
would allow babies okay. to be poisoned okay. in that but, way. But are, you, are, are you disputing the right of the Irish people to have whatever they want in the Constitution? Well, there's nothing democratic about that She's vote. not going to answer that but question, I, I'm sorry. She's Reed, not going please, to answer it, and she's dominating the conversation. I, I've, answered, I've answered that question several times the for you. The answer is I don't agree with the referendum for two reasons. Firstly, because we don't have a referendum to do something dramatically, radically wrong to our Constitution, which is to remove a human right. And secondly, because both Kate and Breathe and everybody else who supports repeal does not want to talk okay. about the reality of what an abortion okay. entails. Okay. I, I think it is very distressing and upsetting. I think, it, I think it's Cora that needs to get realistic here. The fact of the matter is there's a massive appetite there for change in abortion laws in Ireland. Some people favour free, safe, legal, no, no, no restrictions, um, full bodily autonomy, and some people then have, uh, are on the far end, no abortion in any situation. What we're trying to get to here is the middle ground where I believe the vast majority of people of Ireland sit, where you know, there's a, a, a sense of um, you know, there's a right to life, but there's obviously situations, a car, and you, know, you have, I suppose, that many people miscarriage, miscarry before 12 weeks. Then obviously a lot of the structural defects can't be diagnosed until 20, 21 weeks. So there, there, it, it, it's far more complicated than black or white on this. And what I suppose we have to do is, as, 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 as the Oireachtas, we have to work with the, the recommendations of the Citizens' Assembly and ultimately put a referendum to the people of Ireland to let them choose um, and, and, and to exercise their democratic right in Thank this regard. No, no, okay. okay. And it's, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, just get Gavin in. No, he's a man, he can't talk. No, he's, he's, not, he's, not, he's, not, he's a man, he's not allowed to talk. Uh. Can I make a very quick yeah. uh, observation about a, a point that Breed made, that the Oireachtas under Article 15.2 explicitly gives, uh, or the Constitution gives the Oireachtas the power to legislate. The Oireachtas only has the power to legislate in line with what the Constitution already mm. provides. That is why right now, because of the Eighth Amendment, it cannot legislate to... Uh, have abortion in other circumstances. But my point is you don't need to insert that in again. Can, can I mm. g get to the point though, which is that the Citizens' Assembly was told that even if you simply strike out the Eighth Amendment, you just remove Article 40.3.3, draw a line through it and pretend it's not there, it is still not clear whether in fact the Oireachtas would be empowered to legislate for abortion under any circumstances because as a very eminent senior counsel, Brian Murray, told the Assembly, long before the Eighth Amendment was introduced, both the High Court and Supreme Court had, in, in passing, in, in reaching other conclusions, said the Constitution could be invoked to, as a, in a, basically in a pro-life way, that you could argue that the unborn already enjoyed the right to life under certain constitutional clauses, and therefore the Oireachtas would not have been able to legislate for, for a pro-choice right. regime that's anyway. That's right. <coughs> so we, we could find that out easy enough. We could, but that, I, that if you give the Oireachtas the power to legislate on this issue, then there presumably would be a constitutional challenge, and then the Supreme Court would tell us whether that's true or the not. The point I'm simply trying to make, Vincent, is that it creates more certainty as to the extent of the powers that the Oireachtas would have if you in introduce a substitute clause rather than simply drawing a line through Article 40.3.3 as it currently is, according to the evidence that the Assembly was given. So, yeah, Vincent, the word on the street today is that the main parties in the Dáil, both Fianna Gael, Kate's party and Fianna Fáil, are going to do their best to water down what the Citizens' Assembly have recommended so that it's not recognisable as the recommendations have come out. Well, Rita, I won't so, be involved in any water Well, then you better it. leave Fianna Gael because your party will be doing their best to water it down. They are shocked at what the Citizens' Assembly, they have fought all along for this. And we were saying, you don't need a Citizens' Assembly, you have one. It's called Dáil Éireann. We were all elected on the basis of where we stand on these issues. Um, they insisted on going for the Citizens' Assembly. Uh, selecting the 99 individuals of what they different. thought Middle Ireland. This was only postponed. But, so they're shocked the at what the Irish people are saying back to them. Look, they're absolutely <laughs> taken back and they don't want this. So the establishment are going to try and water it down. We've got to go in there and I hope Kate will be with me and, on fighting yeah, for the yeah, rights yeah, of yeah, women to choose. You know, uh, Breed is actually right. I don't agree with her much, but I do think she's, abso she's absolutely right on that. Uh, the politicians who want, who want to see the removal of the Eighth Amendment thought that they set up the Citizens' Assembly as a way to... No, no, that, not the well, politicians. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Breed, let her speak. Breed, let her speak. But I think that the, the Citizens' Assembly was set up with the hope of getting moderate results, which it would be easy to sell to the public. Now they've come back with the reality of what the repeal campaign on 
country wants, which is abortion on demand. What the people of um, Ireland want. But I can assure you, Breathe, that if, the, um, if things go ahead without discussing the reality and without really getting to the, to the root of why the Citizens' Assembly was allowed to operate in such a chaotic manner, um, then you'll get what you want I, anyway. I think, I think I it's a valid point, though, well, that if things had worked out different from the Citizens' Assembly report, you'd be sitting here tonight with a completely different endorsing. Well, well, I wouldn't and because there's still only 99 I think, people I think and someone who didn't show any, up on Sunday. When any case. member of any advocacy group comes on a, 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 a show and starts making commentary that sort of says that the democratic process and okay. the vote mm. and a referendum, yeah. Yeah. that for some reason that should be overrun, that's a very concerning thing in a democratic no, society. Can I, can I oh, say... Okay. Shane, tell us about what the tweets are saying. Uh, yes, indeed, Vincent. Well, as you can imagine, there's an awful lot of uh, them coming in. We can't even get near them, the amount of them, because they're just coming in so thick and fast. Just on the, <clears throat> I know we want to move on from the Citizens' Assembly, but a couple of people pointing out that uh, Cora has been very critical of it, but Cora herself actually presented at the Citizens' Assembly, including the uh, Times Ireland journalist Ellen Coyne, who has been doing a kind of thread on some of the comments made tonight. On the show, uh, Mary Buckley also tweeted in to say, Cora is ridiculous about the Citizens' Assembly, which was led by a distinguished judge, informed by international experts, and reached conclusion by debate. Someone else says if the results of the Citizens' Assembly were in her favour, would Cora be so uh, against it? Uh, Patrick says, I wouldn't trust our politicians who show weak leadership. The Irish people, once given the truth, will protect the right to life. Uh, someone else, Scotus J, says, would Vincent or any of the panel like a referendum on their own life. We live in a democratic society after all. Mairead Fallon tweeted to say Cora is right. No one TD or not should have a right to decide if another human being lives or dies. Uh, Kev says what we've seen from the Citizens' Assembly is that the Constitution is no place for health care provision. And Declan Ganley has been watching the show and Declan Ganley has tweeted to say Fine Gael TD on Vin B complains about Cora Sherlock not being elected and in the next breath welcomes unelected Citizens' Assembly result. <laughs>